First Weed Intruder has an interesting attack called the Character Frobber, and it's useful for testing long strings to see if they have any sort of impact on how the application processes information. So as an example, we're going to use the user privilege level page in Matilda, and we're going to focus on the IV field. The IV field is one of those long strings, and the question here is whether or not changing this string has any kind of impact on the page. So very quickly what we would try to do is we would just try to change the value of the IV and see if there's any impact on the page here. But there's 32 characters and so doing that by hand can become a little bit tedious. To get started we'll go ahead and use the intruder tool to capture a request. So over in Burst Suite we're going to turn the interception on, go back to the browser and refresh the page. The request is captured inside of the intercept we're going to go ahead and send that over to the intruder. Over in the intruder page, we can see the positions are already highlighted. We're going to clear those, and we're only going to select the value of the IV. We're going to add the symbols back that indicate that that is where we want the intruder to focus. We'll leave the attack type as sniper and go to payloads. And the payload type we're going to select the character Frobber. And from the description, it'll actually tell you that it's a good choice when you want to operate on a string and change each letter a little bit. So the way the attack works is it goes down the string one letter at a time and it changes each one slightly. So the numbers, it'll generally increment up to the next number, so like six will become seven, and the letters, it'll increment up to the next letter, so like B will become C. All right, so going back over to the attack, we'll continue to, to set it up. So one of the things we might wanna do is try to understand what's gonna change, but let's run the attack once and see what has a tendency to happen. So we'll hit start the attack, click through the warning, and then wait for the results to come back. So once a couple of results come back, let's compare two responses and see what kind of changes there are. So we'll send the first response over to the compare. And we'll send also the second response over. So if we hit next, that'll take us to the next response. Or if you prefer, you can just highlight the second response and double click on it. And then go to the response and right click on the second response and we'll send that over to the compare tool. So now we have our two responses and we're going to compare those. Synchronize the view and then scroll down and see what differences there are. So we can see that when the first letter was changed, in this case a number from 6 to 7, this field application ID, the first letter changed from A to Q. So again, it's a little tedious to go through every single response and try to look and see what the differences are. Now that we have some idea that the application ID field is going to change, now we can go ahead and use the extract tool to automate the process of finding the changes. If we did some more comparisons later, we would also find that the user ID and the group ID field are affected as well. So let's go ahead and go back over to the results. Go to the options and go down to the grep extract. Now that we know where to look, we can go ahead and set up an extraction. So we're going to scroll down to where we saw that application ID that was near the bottom. We're going to highlight this field that we noticed was changed, the application ID field. 
and burp automatically draws the regular expression pattern around it. And then we'll just hit OK. And then we can go back to the results and we'll see that the values of that field are now pulled out. And we can also start to see that in the first eight characters of the payloader changed, it affects the application ID. And then from that point forward, it doesn't really affect the application ID anymore. So if we want to go add the other two fields, we can do that as well. So go back to options, add, scroll back to the bottom, look for the user ID field, and then we'll do the same for the group ID field. So here's the user ID field. We'll hit OK, add another one for the group ID field. And go back to the results. And we can see that basically when we get to request number nine, the changing of the bytes over in the IV start to affect the user ID. And when we get down to 15, it starts to change the group ID. So whenever you have a long string that you want to change a little bit at a time, the character for our attack is probably a good choice.